Welcome to episode number 93 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media and presented to you once again by our good friends over at SeatGeek. For the first time in months, I get to see Zoom to Zoom, Stephen Brault. Hello, Hi, Chris. friend. It's been a while. It has been. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of life changes happened in that time. It's been good. Well, it's good that we're getting caught up. Uh, we're we're both in different places than when last we spoke. I'll yeah. let you start with where you are. Where are you? I am in. Well, I'm technically in Tempe, Arizona, um, right next to Scottsdale. Um, I moved in with my girlfriend here in Arizona, Woo. and uh, yeah, yeah, I decided to make the move. It's been awesome. It's been really, really fun. We've had a great time. Uh, she made this office for me. Isn't that cool? It's got oh some God. pictures of me and this cool Nakona backpack with my number on it, some baseballs. I did the clock and the globe. So, but then also there's my jerseys up there. So this is amazing. I know. I've, this is the first time I've ever had like a, you know an office like my own space. She she really wanted to um, to kind of make it you know, kind of my area. So it's awesome. I love it. Spent a lot of time here playing video games on my laptop. So it's great. All right. A few things here. This is a, this is a big deal when you uh, move in with a young woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. We're, we're, uh, you know, we've, let's see, we dated for about a year and then we broke Mm -hmm. up for about a year um, Mm -hmm. and found our way back to each other, thankfully. And uh, it's been amazing. And moving out to Arizona has been really cool. I was kind of nervous about it at first you know just kind of one of the big things was I know there's a ton of baseball players out here but I had my setup you know like uh, where I worked out um, where I did my throwing all that stuff and so moving out here I was kind of nervous about that but then I started texting people that I knew that lived out here and it was just so easy so I do actually I throw my bullpens at ASU which we're really close to um and uh, we throw lives down at a high school in Chandler sometimes. Um, and then they just opened that thing in Mesa for players to use, which is cool. So it's just been awesome. I've loved being out here. It's really fun. Yeah. I mean, dude, your demeanor is not like, I mean, you're always an upbeat chipper dude anyway, but you've got a little extra glow to you. I don't know. Yeah. Or... Yeah. A little extra glow. I think it's just the office, you know, it just really puts me in my, my good head space. Is there anything in the number 43 backpack? I don't know, actually. Uh, I don't think so. No, actually, this is a funny story that I can tell you. There's two baseballs in here. Oh. But this is what she calls her hate Steven backpack, right? Because I gave it to her when we dated before. And then we broke up because I'm an idiot. And then, uh, uh, but she kept some of my stuff in what she called her hate Steven backpack. And so she still had it. So when we got back together, she was like, yeah, I put all the stuff in here because I didn't want to throw it away, but I also didn't want to see it. So, okay. Um, you gave, did you, did you give her a backpack with your backpack just fell off the wall? That's all right. It's a backpack. I hope that's not a bad omen. No, no, no. It's great. Um, did you give her a backpack with your number on it? Is that what it was? Yeah. So we actually did a photo shoot together for Nakona a few years ago. Um, and they the owner lives here in Arizona. So we went and did a photo shoot with all like a bunch of bags and stuff. And at the end of it, they gave us a bunch of stuff to take home and they hadn't even started making these backpacks yet, but they do now. Um, but yeah, they gave it to us and I was like, I'm not going to use it. Like, do you want it? And she liked it. So she took it. She thinks that wives and girlfriends of baseball players would like these if they were smaller. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just fell off. The wall. <laughs> this is, but it's cool though. It's, it's like a leather backpack, you know, it's got the number on it. I don't understand it. It has never fallen off before. I take it off one time and now it won't stay. Apparently I mess with the weight or something. Yeah, the, the the two baseballs in it were evenly weight distribution, like on either side of the plane, like on those small jets. Sometimes you have to make sure you, you can't have too many heavy people on one side. Right. Yeah. You know, I actually um, I was just watching Top Gun while uh, we had our miscommunication. And I didn't know it was happening. <laughs> if you want to explain that, that was a good one. You were watching Top Gun? I was. Yeah, because I, you know, I just go on Netflix and just see what's on there. I'm just going to take this down for now. Yeah. We'll put it back really up later. Me. Um, but we're, uh, 
Yeah, she. I don't think Lydia. Have you ever seen Top Gun? No, she hasn't seen it. So we're gonna watch that. We've been watching a lot of movies together, like catching up on movies we haven't seen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just on Netflix. So I was like, that seems like a good way to waste time while I'm waiting for Chris because he's busy doing something else. So for, for people that uh, aren't privy to um, private conversations I have with Stephen Brault, yep. uh, I texted him and I said, um, you know, we're going to do this at, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. He's like, OK, no problem. And so he texts me at like 9 a.m. Pacific time. He's like, are we still doing this? I was like, yeah. And then at 925, he tries to call me and I'm in the middle of a radio interview at that point. So I have to hit decline and it hits the voicemail. I said, I'll I text him. I was like, I'll hit you right back. And so I call him and he goes, so are we doing this or not? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to do it at 10 a.m. Pacific time. He's like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I was like, oh, and you're not in Arizona, are you? He's like, yes, I am. Yes, so, yes. I mean, that's classic miscommunication. Forgetting yeah. forgetting that I'm an hour ahead. The, that's the annoying thing about Arizona. Sometimes yes. you're an hour ahead. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're not. <laughs> right. You're about to not be, right? Uh, is that that? Yeah, that's the spring. Everybody else yeah. springs forward and Arizona's just like, nah, we don't need <laughs> We're that good. shit. We're, We're good. good right here. <laughs> right here. Okay. Yeah. Hey, gang, at some point, baseball will go on, and you can watch Stephen Brault or whatever your favorite player or team is out there. And here's the deal. I want you to get the best tickets for the lowest price, and that's why you got to go download the SeatGeek app right here on your mobile device. It's very easy. Go use it. Use the promo code ROSE. You're going to get 20 bucks off of your first ticket. So whatever it is, for baseball games in the future, uh, got basketball games, you want to go see hockey, you want to go see college baseball, you want to go get a concert in, whatever it is, download it on the SeatGeek app, use the code word ROSE, and once again, you get 20 bucks off of your first offer. Here's one of the cool things. They actually rate the seats on a scale of 0 to 10, and they also color code it. So the great seats out there, are going to get a green. The ones that are kind of tough to see and enjoy your time, they're going to get a red code. So they help figure out exactly where you're sitting and what will uh, enable you to have the best experience. So once again, go download the app on your mobile device, SeatGeek, right now. Use the promo code ROSE and get 20 bucks off of that first order. I'll see you at the game. What else have you watched on your movie list? Uh, let's see. We watched – so two nights in a row we watched House of Gucci – or sorry, let's go three nights in a row. We watched, we finally watched Spider-Man No Way Home. We had been so lazy about seeing that. I'm glad we eventually saw it. It was so good. Uh, then we watched, the next night we watched House of Gucci, which was good. De definitely more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Um, right. And then we watched King Richard. Um, I want to see it. Which was, uh, this is, she want, I she would be mad if I didn't say this. She's been saying we should watch this movie for like a month. Like every night that we're relaxing at home and she's, you know, let's watch a movie. Uh, I was always just like, ah, no, whatever. And then we watched it. Like, it is so good. Oh my God. It is such a great movie. And it makes you like really go back in and look at, you know, oh yeah. Okay. So they talk about, they're going to be the best in you know, history, all that stuff. And then you go look at it and it's like, okay, Serena Williams, Williams was unbelievable. But the movie is a lot about Venus because Venus was the first daughter sure was. to get up to that level um and so the movie mostly focuses on like her progression because serena was kind of she kind of came after it but he even says in it like you're going to be the greatest she's going to be really really good number one in the world but you're going to be the greatest of all time because i don't know i guess he's the dude is like the what's the the dad of the ball brothers what's his name oh yeah, Lonzo and uh, yeah, um, yes. Anyway, yeah, that guy. We got it. Um, yes, that's exactly who he it's is. It's like him, except this guy is like uh, almost more. I I don't know. I I guess they're probably the same amount of intensity about everything that goes on, but yeah. but it works. It's he Levar got two, Ball, by the way. Lavar, yeah. He got two daughters to the very highest level, like literally the, the best, um, which is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, and. You know what? So I was obviously I was covering sports at the time when they were coming up. And so people didn't know what to do with Richard Williams. They were like, he's just this crazy man who has no idea. Like, what is he doing? Really? 
And once Venus and Serena started doing their thing, then everybody was like, plus it opened it up an entirely different world. You never had young African-American girls dominating tennis right? ever. Well, so that's, take that. I mean, big, you know, theme in the movie, obviously, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there was just so many components to what was going on. I am excited to watch it. I don't know why I haven't. I should. I'll, I'll tell you this story about Serena Williams. She used to come on as a guest host quite a bit to the Best Damn Sports Show, period. Oh, cool. And she came on one day when we had Steve Irwin, the, the late, great, the animal guy, right? Uh, uh, come on. Obviously. I know. Okay. And she was like me. We could not stand wild animals. Like Sally would love it when they'd bring a big old snake and they'd drape it around his neck and stuff like that. Serena and I were like, we're checking out. So we are in the back <laughs> of the stage and she is cowering behind me. I was like, she's got her hands on my shoulders and stuff. I was like, this is like one of the three greatest moments of my life. Like right, so yeah. looking to me to protect her protect from me. a wild animal. Just give her, a, like, give her a stick of some kind. She'll beat it off way better than you ever could. I'm like, don't worry, Serena. I've got I you. I will protect you. Yeah. Michelle, I told Michelle that story. She's like, uh, right. Yeah, Good right. Uh, Speaking uh, of uh, Steve Irwin, there's a guy that I work out with. He's 21 years old. He came over to uh, America from Australia to try out. He had a G League tryout for basketball. Um, and he's a good dude, really, really nice guy. But he, he tore his, you know, something in his knee and ended up having to get surgery. And so now he's here in Arizona doing physical therapy. Um, but I took him to his first baseball game ever. We went to the ASU game, uh, Lydia and I and Tristan and his wife, we went to his first baseball game he's ever been to. He didn't even know what a home run was like completely no knowledge of the sport at all. Um, but it was fun, but you know me, I have to be an ass sometimes. So I'm like, Hey, so like growing up was your hero, like crocodile Dundee, you know, is that who you want to be? And he goes, I mean, I, I really liked him, but I mean, honestly, like as much of a stereotype as is like Steve Irwin was Irwin was my favorite person on the planet. And I was like, yes, yeah. that makes me so happy. Um, Such a nice guy, dude. He I know. So, I, oh, we were crushed when he died. Like we couldn't believe it. He got stung in the heart by like a stingray. Yeah, I can't imagine. Like, think of all the actually horribly dangerous animals he handled. And then the one that kills him is one. The only reason it killed him is because it went straight in his heart. Like, that sucks. That sucks. Can we continue on with, like, some nicer stuff? Oh, Steve. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm down. Uh, what what nice stuff is there going on right now? What do we have? Oh, yeah. With yours, with this sport? Yeah. Yeah. Not... So when, um, was there, I, I want to take take us through the range of emotions as a guy who's kind of on the outside looking yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been very strange, obviously, but there's nothing I can do. You know, I can't talk to teams. I, you know, I, I talk to, you know, players and I get updates about everything that's happening, but it's, I mean, it's really like uh, just kind of waiting for me. It, it's funny. I, I keep telling people it, you see these baseball players, you know, these professional baseball players uh, who, have our lives together so it seems but then you take baseball away from us for this part that we're supposed to be there and we're used to being there and like that's normal for us and now we're all walking around just like wandering so what do we do do i guess we just continue <laughs> off season stuff like i don't know you just work out and then you throw and then you play video games and watch movies and travel like it's just weird um, obviously I want to get this done as soon as possible and figure out where I'm going to go play. But I mean, I'm not the, I'm not the guy to ask for the process of it. I, I'm no, I'm not, I, yeah. not the process, but here you are, you're in a very different boat than most players, right? You are because you are a free agent. You mm -hmm. were, um, you were DFA, DFA right you were non-tendered, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just a couple of days before this whole lockdown went in, it was about 24 hours. Ooh, 24. You made it even worse. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, and I mean, listen, we know Carlos Correa and Freddie Freeman and those guys, they're going to get whatever they get. Right. Then there's guys like you who are in a very, and you're coming off an injury plagued season for the most yep. part. Mm -hmm. Have you and your agent discussed how this is going to go down once the lockout's over? Yeah. You know, there's, there's ways that you can do this. Um, the, the funny thing is you have kind of, um, like 
I've been able to get fully a hundred percent ready to go. Like it's because of how far we've gotten, I've already thrown live VPs of three innings. I mean, it's like, we've, I'm, I've gone all the way up. This has been a lot of fun. I've luckily there's a lot of people out here to throw to. So I'm throwing professional hitters. It's great. But, um, after the lockout ends, most likely it's going to be some, you know, a whirlwind of activity. Right. And so the hard part is not getting lost in the mix, but also, um, kind of making yourself known that, you know, making myself known that I'm healthy, I'm ready, all that stuff. And so a way to do that is to throw for teams, you know, just like a good old fashioned tryout, um, which is something that is pretty normal in off seasons, like in normal off seasons, free agents will throw, will like their agents will contact teams and say, he's going to be throwing a bullpen or mm -hmm. he's going to be throwing a live this time, this day, whatever. Um, and so that's probably what we're going to do, but because of this, like we were planning on doing that, you know, like January 15th, when we thought this was going to get done the first time. And then, you know, February 1st, when we thought it was going to get done and then, okay, right around report day, we'll do it. And so now we're here in March and the time keeps getting shorter, right? Um, we'll probably have maybe a month of spring training, maybe only three weeks at this point. And, um, and so it's going to be go, go, go immediately when it ends. Um, so it's just going to come down to, you know, hopefully teams are willing and ready to, to take the time, the 30 minutes it takes to watch me throw a bullpen. One of the beauties is being in Arizona is that so many teams are here based here. Um, and so it's not like they have to call somebody to go out to San Diego to do all that stuff, you know? Um, so, you know, we'll see how it works out at, at this point. There's really nothing I can do. It's just, we went through, <laughs> I was, when we look back at our major league career for all the players who are playing right now, it's going to be, Hey, play through the COVID year, play through the, the lockout year. Um, and look, we survived. So it's just, it's all going to be something weird to look back on, but well, go you with are, the flow. I know. And you're, you're very captain positivity. You're laid back. And I appreciate all that. As an athlete, you live on borrowed time. You just do. You yeah. can't do this unless you're Tom Brady, who was still slinging it the way he was at age 44. You're not, you can't do it forever. No. Is there a frustration for you just on a personal level that, this thing is not done because you're sitting here saying, Jesus, I'm about to be 30 years old. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. There's a frustration. I, I just, because, you know, I, I always say this, uh, you know, I'm a baseball player and I've been a baseball player since I was a kid, but first and foremost, I'm a baseball fan. I mean, I watch yes, so many are. baseball games during the season. I follow stories. I like seeing things. I like meeting people, all that stuff. I'm a huge baseball fan. Um, and so that, that part of it is, is sad. Um, and you know, I want to be able to be watching games. We went to that ASU game the other day. There were so many people there and I was like, wow, I'm surprised how many people here. And then I realized, oh, well, a lot of these people would probably be going to spring training games right now, mm -hmm. but they can't. Um, so, Hey, good for college baseball. They, they signed on that big deal too, for ESPN. They're getting a ton of games on ESPN this year. That's great. I mean, it's awesome for, for college baseball players, but yeah, you know, I it's it's frustrating because I, I just want to be playing. You know, who knows how long I'm gonna get to play. And um and it would be nice to to, to capitalize on that uh, opportunity, the window so, of opportunity. What was the atmosphere like there in Tempe at the game? Uh it was it was awesome. You know, I actually saw her there. I saw Zach Granke there. He was undercover. I can say it now because the game is already over. But he great one. I know. I was getting a, a hot dog at a concession stand. And, uh, and I turned and Zach Granke walks up to the little grill right next to me. And then he, he, uh, gets a water and walks away. And I was like, they, and there's full of people, there's people everywhere and nobody said anything to him. And I'm like, he's good at this. He keeps his head down. He has a hat on. He kind of like, you know, Zach Granke, he's quiet. He kind of has that hunched over look like nobody, you have to like get a good look to know it's him, you know, but, uh, He's, he was full incognito. It was pretty good. Did you contemplate saying hi? I did, but two reasons. One, uh, he doesn't know who I am. So, like, it would just be. I guarantee you he knows exactly who. He's one of the smartest guys in baseball. He knows exactly who you are. 
Okay, well, he, sorry. Let's say this. He doesn't know me. Does that make sense? But that's what. That's why you introduce yourself. Hi. Right. But then let's, also, let's let's, let's 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 pretend he's he's full incognito. If I say if I stop him and talk to him with all these people around, then maybe other people notice that he's there, and I'm not going to be the catalyst that starts that. You know, like he's there trying to watch a baseball game. Go for it, dude. Enjoy yourself. He's got his water bottle. I, he had something in his hand. I hope to God it was a scorebook. Just, oh, that would make me so happy. What? <laughs> he, had, he, was, he was holding something in his hand. It looked kind of like a book. And I'm really, really hoping it was a scorebook. Because if it was, that's just the most Zach Granky thing I could think of. How awesome would it be if he was scoring a college baseball game? Ah, uh, that would hype me up. We saw that game, that ASU team, they got some power. There was a guy, they were playing Oklahoma State. The pitcher for Oklahoma State was throwing 97 miles an hour. Because, of course, because this is what happens now. A Tuesday game, they have a guy throwing 97 miles an hour. <laughs> um, and, and in the first inning, the three-hitter for ASU hit an absolute tank. 97, righty-righty, just pulled it to left center field, no doubter. Oh, it was beautiful. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so we're getting our fix the way we can. Arizona State, that was like the first college baseball team I fell in love with in the um, in the early to mid 80s. It was Barry Bonds. Oh, yeah. It was a guy named Odeby McDowell, who wow, was a cool name, a great name. Center fielder could run, never really made it great in the bigs. I think he played for the Rangers. He might have played for my tribe, to be honest with you, for a while, but never really made it. But Bonds, you would watch and you're like, that guy's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, imagine. Rodney Pete, with who I've been friends with forever and worked with on Best Dam and coached one of his sons in Little League. That's why he ended up not being great. Uh, <laughs> Rodney was not only a quarterback at USC, but he was also their third baseman and second baseman. He'd move around the infield. He said the hardest he ever got hit, and it included in the NFL, was Barry Bonds hit a one hopper off of his throat. And he oh, thought God. he was going to, yes, he thought he was going to die. He was like, yeah. It hit off his throat, and he's like, <laughs> and everybody's like, it's okay, shake it off. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got a story for you. Since we're, this is this is how this all. I love this. When I was in Double uh, A in Altoona, Pennsylvania, we had a we had a thing that we would our team would do that I don't know who started it, but when it would start raining, everybody would go bang it. This is what we do. I don't know why this was the symbol. It was just bang it. Let's go home. Let's not play. Right. So it's, for people that aren't familiar with baseball terminology, make sure that you clarify that because yeah, it could bang be it means several let's different not ways. play. Like let's okay, thank don't, you. let's not do it. Yeah. Bang it. So uh, we're at the field one day after a game the game was already over and we were eating salmon that was, you know, served for us for post game. And it was pretty dry, you know, double a salmon. It just, it's not going to be the best. And, uh, and we have this guy on our team. His name is Max. He, um, he got salmon lodged in his throat. Right. And so he's like, we're all sitting in this main room and, and he's, he starts choking. Like, Oh my God. Like actually choking. And, uh, and one of the guys on our team, one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, his name is Stetson. And Max goes up to him like this, like panicking, like, and Stetson goes, yeah, they bang it, bang it. <laughs> and not knowing that this guy's actually choking. Oh, my God. I know. And uh, and luckily, one of our bullpen oh. catchers uh, – or, sorry, he was one of our catchers. Uh, he was, like, our second catcher. He noticed what was happening and started giving Max the Heimlich maneuver over a trash can. It didn't work because he didn't know what he was doing. He was just like lifting him up, you know? He wasn't like squeezing him. So then our trainer came in as Max is still complete, like no error and gives him a real Heimlich maneuver and he, you know, spits it out in the trash can, whatever. And everybody's like, like it put the biggest, like, oh my God feeling in that clubhouse. Like we just almost watched Max die. Like it was bad. It was really scary. It was just so quiet. And then like 30 seconds later, uh, everybody kind of just goes like, okay, ha ha. He lived. Now it's funny. Yay. <laughs> uh, 
So that's why that's I think of the choking. Whenever I think of choking, I think of that story. That was that was a moment. That was a hell of a moment. We will be right back to the Chris Rose rotation CRR in some parts of the world. And speaking of, it's a huge week. Conference championship week. Turn your team's victory into your own big win with the DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers, you can bet $5 on any team to win, and you get $200 in free bets if they do. It's that simple. If they win, you win. Illinois listeners, yup, always. We have some big news. Mobile registration is back, and right now you can sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook app simply by downloading the app from your phone. If the sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, DraftKings still DraftKings. They got their pools. They got their free-to-play stuff. Go check them out. Um, I'll be honest. Bobby Gordo's been placing bets and snapping necks, cashing checks. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE, R-O-S-C. Bet $5 on any college hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win. With promo code ROSE. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, 21 plus restrictions apply. See the show notes for details. Back to Chris Rose. Speaking of minor leagues, we're, I don't know, what are we, 20 minutes into this show or so? No. You haven't even asked where I am. Oh, yeah, you're in a hotel. That's right. I'm sorry. We talked about it before. We were telling stories. I don't know. All right, what do you got? Where are you? You're in a hotel. I know that. You're on the West Coast. I am in a city that... No. Oh. I am in a city... We should play this game. I am in a city with Mm -hmm. which you are very, very familiar. And you said it was minor leagues. It's Indianapolis. You have to be in Indianapolis. I am in Indianapolis, Indiana for the NFL Scouting Combine. Nice. Are you staying? Which hotel are you staying at over there? I can't tell people. That's fair. Oh, well, actually, um, by the time this airs, I'll be long gone. I'm at the Hyatt downtown. Okay, yeah. So the um, uh, I, my Lydia and I just actually visited some friends in Indy like a month ago. Um, uh, they live up in Carmel. And it was fun being back. You know, it's always I, – I loved Indy. I think it's a cool city. How many years did you spend here? I was there basically all of 2016 – um with you know a few days here and there and I mean, that's, and this then, is a great city to pitch in the minor leagues i mean it's a I big know. league city you've got the colts you've got the pacers here you yeah. know you got indiana just down the road in bloomington butler yeah. if you wanted to go to a good college basketball game uh 2017 i was there for more than half the season um and i got 20 starts there i think that year and i had like a 1.8 era it was crazy Ooh. i had a crazy year um, and we went, actually, we got to go see the Pacers play against the Cavs in the playoffs, because like you said, you get these hookups, yes. like we're the major league baseball team of that city. And everybody knows who you are. Like when we went and visited, um, we were just at a restaurant and somebody was like, Hey, you know, we said we're visiting and it's like, Oh yeah, I actually spent a few years here. I played for the Indians in there. And he was like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like I go to the games all the time. They're super fun because everybody loves those Indians games. You get like 10,000 fans on average a game for a minor league stadium. It's crazy. It's so much fun. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I love that place. Why? So how long are you there for just a few days? Well, I got in, I took a red eye on Tuesday. I'm here till, till Monday because the, uh, Scouting Combine starts today on the day that we're taping this a Thursday and runs through the weekend. That's crazy. crazy. So what do you, what do you do there? Do you host like, um, yeah, I, I host, I'm the, we're the secondary set, Rich Eisen and Daniel Jeremiah. They're actually in the booth kind of calling all the events. And then I'm up on the concourse levels, right? I like to call it the Lido deck. And you got your Um, little, you got your little, uh, booth thing. No, well, we're not that? a booth. We're on. We're actually on a desk. I'm up there with uh, okay. Charles Davis and, and Peter Schrager, and we just kind of add, um, add in some points here and there. So right. it's fun. I mean, they're, they're long days. They're seven hour days on the air, um, but it's really a blast. It's totally you get to watch blast. some some insane athletic Athletes. prowess. Woo! Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I love watching guys run the forty. Like it is so much. Fun. I'm a huge fan of just watching speed play in sports. Yeah. 
That's what it's really one of the things I miss that in baseball, because I think we have, we've never had better athletes, 25 years of age and younger Mm -hmm. and ask them to do less athletically. Yeah. It's a bummer. I'm just not a fan. Like I really think people ask, well, what would, what would change baseball a little bit? And I said, I think it's going to take a seismic shift in a philosophy by an organization, maybe not to go back to like the mid eighties Cardinals where they're bouncing the ball off the AstroTurf and running for days, but to draft guys who go alley to alley and can run. And yeah. I'm not going to put up with this shit of, all right, yeah, I'll live with the strikeouts and the 228 average. As long as you get a decent OPS and put the ball over the wall 35 times. Like, I think it's going to take that sort of philosophy to get the athleticism back in the game. It is. Well, this is, because I, I I love having this talk, this debate, because I love baseball so much, um, that the idea of manufacturing runs is gone, even in college. So I'm watching in a college baseball game, runner on second, nobody out, two hitter up, and they didn't bunt. And just even imagining that when you were in college, that was 100%. 100% you were going to bunt that guy over to third. But now analytics has even taken over college. And the problem is the further it goes back and the further it goes down, it's it's going to make it harder to come out of that because now well, I'll be honest with you though it. I'm not a huge fan of the bunt game but I am a fan of you can handle the bat in that spot and at least hitting the ball to the right side because it might get through right I'm I'm not disagreeing with you I don't think it's necessarily the right play either but college was always that they used to call it West Coast baseball right literally if the leadoff runner got on first got on first you were bunting you were bunting for a hit but you were bunting like that was how a lot of colleges did it. And especially on the West coast. And that's why they call it West coast baseball. So, you know, you're welcome for that obvious explanation, but um, yeah, I, I think the same thing. I, the, the reason that it's hard to do is that it has come to everybody's attention that manufacturing runs is a lot harder than every now and then hitting a ball over the wall. It's harder to string together three hits than it is to, every three innings hit a homer but you know? is it harder to get a hit to get a guy who can really run and steal a base is it harder to steal a base or hit a home run it's a good question who had the most steals last year i think somebody had 47 the year ago and i forget I'd have and how many up. homers was the most homers last year who hit the most homers last year it That's was like 51 flight. right yeah so yeah usually but somewhere I mean, it's around not a that. huge difference no, you it's know? not. And I think you'd be able to find more people who can steal 45 bases than you can that can hit 50 totally. home runs. The totally. problem is, can those people also get on base? Terrence Gore has, what, two World Series rings? And he he's he had like a total of like 12 at-bats for those playoff runs or even like full seasons in the major leagues because he that's what he was. He was the speed guy. He would get called up in the playoffs to steal. And people just don't really value that anymore. It's I, I get it, but I'm but one of the most menacing players in the history of baseball and certainly uh, Starling Marte. Thank you very much our producer extraordinaire Robbie Shiraco. Starling Marte. That guy. Steel. That's good. Um by the way, that's a guy in his early 30s leading the league. Just want to let know. you know. That's not 23-year-old Starling Marte. No. And he's but he's really really good at stealing bases. I, you know, okay, I played with him for years. He's really good because he's learned. He's exactly. learned how to you know, I, I can't imagine – that's what I'm saying is that I think that if I were to build a team of speedsters and guys who know how to pick up pitchers' moves and stuff like that, what doesn't that piss you off when guys are over there at first and you're like, I know he can really run? Yeah, yeah. but the, And the funny thing is you don't even really worry about it anymore because they're only going to go if they get a good opportunity. People don't hit and run anymore, like ever. That's the other thing. Why don't they hit and run? Is it because guys can't handle the bat? Because we're not, or we, I'm not a hitter. Hitters are not taught to get the ball on the ground anymore. You're taught to lift. And so now I'm asking you to do a completely different swing just to hope that we get it through a hole. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And and I don't want people to misconstrue what I'm saying. I don't want them to say, oh, well, Rose wants baseball the way it was in the 70s. That's not what I'm saying. I like different kinds of baseball. I like having different teams that do different things. Absolutely. Like that's the fun aspect. I just don't Mm -hmm. want all 30 teams having the same mantra, but that's what's exactly happened. And I don't care if it's because the leadership came from 
the Dodgers, Tampa Bay, Cleveland, you have a lot of those trees where guys are now up the food chain in decision-making areas that are all thinking the same. I mean, Theo yeah. Epstein has come out and said it, that he's part of the problem that the way baseball is played the way it is. And yeah. I just think that if you had some teams, not all 30 teams, change the philosophy a little bit, it would, A, put a better product on the field, and B, make it way more interesting. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have two things I want to say. So the first one is going to be, I can still remember the most exciting play that I've ever watched in baseball because it was so built up. Everybody knew it was going to happen and it still happened was Dave Roberts stealing second off of my honor Rivera. Right. Great call. A hundred percent. Like, yeah, there's been, you know, crazy home runs and no hitters and all this stuff. That was so cool. But they brought Dave Roberts in, they put him on first base, and they said, you're going to steal second. And everybody in the world knew that he was going to go. And Mariano Rivera picked over, what, three times? Like, it was just – and his lead was so big. It was so big. They're just like, dude, he's going to get picked off. He's going to get picked off. And then Mariano does a quick step, and Dave Roberts still takes the bag, right? And, like, I just remember as soon as he took off – my heart's pounding, you know, like, Oh my gosh, this is, it was like for the, for the series, you know, they needed that run so bad. And that was when that, see, that's a different kind of baseball because they weren't going, he's on first. Now we need one of our guys to come through and hit a homer, even though David Ortiz wouldn't stop hitting homers that playoffs. It was, (laughs) we need him to get into scoring position because that is the, I mean, that is more important than, you know, hoping somebody will hit a homer. Um, and then the second thing I was going to say was about teams doing other things. Oh yeah. Like think about basketball, right? You used to have like the Pacers who were just, and the Pistons, especially the Pistons who were like insane. Right. And they were known for that. They had like uh, brawlers that you don't want to mess with them. You know, it's a and different attitude yep. and the Knicks. Yeah. And you have these intense rivalries because of that. And in baseball, you would have the same thing. You know, you had teams that legitimately hated each other and it just, it doesn't happen the same way anymore. So I well, but think I there's think a lot a, of change. I, I think that happens a lot in sports period. I, I and, and by the way, that doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm okay with, I still think the competition is great. Oh, I yeah. really do. I mean, yeah, it was fun watching, the, you know, part of that series, the back-to-back ALCSs that the Yankees and Red Sox played those were some of the most important series we've had in baseball history because there was so much craziness. There were so many big names. There was so much star power in it. And just the way the series played out back to back years where it goes seven games like that. We need that. Yeah, we really do. I mean, imagine I I still remember like after the Red Sox won that series and it was just like, well, they're going to, I mean, there's no point to even watch the world series. Like, they're going to win the world series <laughs> after winning oh. that. It's just like, okay, you know, well, we're going to dominate. And they did. Millar told me that is he's like, we felt bad for the Cardinals. They're like what they had you, no shot. Yeah. Like, no, like it's almost hard to remember that it was even the Cardinals who made it to the world mm-hmm. series against them because the national league just didn't matter that, that year. It was right. all about the American league. Just like an interesting little game. nugget They're for you. Stupid. About the 2004, um, End of the World Series. Yeah. Edgar Renteria was the last out. One hopper yeah. back to Keith Polk. He also ended the 97 World Series with a walk-off hit against my tribe. So wow. he, he ended two World Series. One very awesomely. <laughs> one, one, I mean, they were already down 3-0. Like, it was Right. It was over, but it's, it's interesting that the same guy does it twice, one winning, one not winning. Yeah. I mean, in a, on a much smaller scale, twice in college, I had the chance to end the season at the plate and both times I got a hit. Really? Yeah. You kept your, the whole season alive? Kept the season alive twice. Both, both were ground balls in between the first and second baseman. They wouldn't have been hits nowadays, but they were hits then. <laughs> Hey, what do you think about this? Part of the negotiation that's going on is the banning of the shift. Are you yeah. in favor of banning it? Um, I, I honestly, I don't I think it's going to make much difference. I don't, I don't really. Yeah. I, 
the only difference it'll make is when people do like the extreme shift, you know, the guy out in right field. Um, but as far as, you know, there's most of those ground balls hits that get taken away from that guy that's way back there. Uh-huh. Um, I think those will be, those will be gifted to you. You'll finally have those hits again, which would be nice, but I don't know. Like you can still move the shortstop and third baseman around wherever you want on that side, if they do this. Right. So you still can go with scouting reports. I mean, you still can move it around. You just, it's going to, it'll affect lefties more than righties for sure. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but people are just trying to hit home runs. Now those hits are accidents anyway. So what hits are accidents? Home the runs? Hits, no, no. The hits that are ground balls through the hole. Oh. Oh, okay. Or not or not hits that are ground balls through the hole. The the big thing too is making sure that, like uh I've seen a lot of people talk about the the four outfielders thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. and that Hello getting taken away. With that. Yeah. So I I don't know. I mean, there's like two hitters in all of baseball that they do that for. So I don't know. We'll see. No, no shifting could could it could have a bigger impact than I think. And it could make it so that teams have to start thinking about, Oh, we can actually get hits again. We can manufacture runs because we have more space. So it's yep. possible. Or people will be playing like volleyball where once the, you know, once the pitcher lifts his leg, they're just sprinting back out to the outfield. <laughs> get into our position. See now that I'd be in favor of, it'd be more action, more movement. Yeah. It's like a, it's like pre-snap motion in football. Right, exactly. You'd have to watch. They'd have to have like a little screen on the side on the corner Mm -hmm. right there so that they can uh, show what the infielders are doing. Uh, Speaking of moving and shaking, uh, there was a video that you put out with Lydia, I believe, doing a little PFP work. Is that accurate? It is. Yeah. Well, it was PFP work, but also uh, this is kind of part of my throwing program now. Um, I do, I field ground balls and I throw them. The idea of getting just the athleticism back of throwing. I was just getting too mechanical. Um, oh. And so this is something that she came out with me and she did it with me. Cause well, I want to do this. I want to give a listen to it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's soundful as we like to say in the biz. Here we go, Robbie. How you train during a lockout. <laughs> yeah. Just classic throwing against the fence on a dirt field. It's the best way to do it. I mean, when was the last time that, that field, I mean, there looks like there's a gazillion dog paw prints on it and Sasquatch maybe might be on there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, um, that's actually a, it's a, like an old little league field. They don't use it anymore. I don't think it was, you know, a city of San Diego field. So they don't really upkeep it very much. I actually, that same field I did throw to like a 13 year old kid this off season too. He caught you? No, he wanted to hit against me. He recognized me. And I was, I was, I was doing some mound work actually on that field. I was just doing some dry drills and stuff. And so he came in and stepped in the box. And so I, th- I threw against him. <laughs> I threw pitches to him. <laughs> it was fun. Okay. What happened? Oh, uh, he didn't hit anything, but you know, it was, he was just blown away by how fast it was, you know, oh, that's I, the thing. What, what do you think you were throwing at that point? Probably 85, 86, something around there. He's 13 years old, you know, so it's different. This is very different. But then like throwing him sliders and stuff was funny because those are going to move, you know. Well, wait a second. You threw the 13 year old sliders? I told him that I was throwing it. I wasn't just like, yeah, good luck, kid. And then throwing (laughs) him stuff. (laughs) No, it was fun. He wanted he wanted to see it all. And then he pitched against me and and I hit against him. And um, like I was like, okay, I'll you know. I'll take it easy. I just want to see what you got, whatever. And then he wanted me to really swing. So I did. And I, 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 he liked it. He enjoyed it. I didn't kill him. That's all that matters. I was like, I'm I'm only pulling the ball. I am not hitting it to the opposite field or up the middle. So that's all I could think about is my brawl hits a liner right off a 13 year old's coconut. Yeah, no, his dad was there. His dad was loving it. He, we had we had a great time. It was just it's one of those, you know, just things that happen when you just go out in the world and play baseball. There's other people that want to play, you know. That is great. How cool is that for that kid? He'll have that memory forever. 
Yeah, I like to think so. I like to think, you know, he, he definitely, you know, we had a lot of fun. We were talking the whole time through it, obviously. Um, but yeah, dude, I don't know. I, his dad said, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. If we had known who you are when we first came up, we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have bothered you. And I was like, dude, I'm out here standing alone on a field. Like, I, it doesn't matter. Like, it, I'm not clearly not trying to be secretive about what I'm doing. I'm just here, you know? I mean, you have to have done that, right? You like, have you ever hit against somebody or shot with somebody in basketball or something that is like a big hero of yours? I mean, listen, I, I've had the good fortune of like taking batting practice a couple of times in major league stadiums That's and cool. stuff like that. And like I took it at Fenway Park, did it mm. in Angel Stadium one time. I did, did it you hit one over the monster. Back. No, I one hopped the monster. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's close. It's, close. it's amazing how close it is. Yeah. I can't is. imagine pitching there what the hell it looks like. Ugh. Too close. Horrible. Um, so did the kid out of curiosity come up and say, I'm a huge fan of you on the Rose rotation? No, but but he did say at I, I have actually gotten that a lot though. I just want to let it huh. be known. Yeah. I've had a lot of people a lot of people tell me that they very much enjoy the Rose rotation and Good. you know they they like the way that we talk on it that's more just regular life which it should be because yes. we're regular people except you that's it. you're a weirdo <laughs> but i like it <laughs> what do you um you said you're playing a ton of video games people want to know what are you what are you into right now oh everybody knows what i'm playing right now it's called elden ring it just came out it's um there's a gaming company called from software and they make these games. They made a lot of old games called Dark Souls. Um, and they made Bloodborne and they made Sekiro. Not that you would know any of this, but the whole point of these games is that they're extremely hard. And it's like an adventure, you know, like with a sword or an axe or whatever, kill things. Um, but you fight these bosses that are just absolutely massive and take 20 tries to kill or more. And so you get stuck on these bosses. You have to learn their moves bef- because they kill you in like two hits right, if you, right. you know, don't know. Um, and so it's not for everybody because there's no difficulty setting. It's just on very, very hard, basically always. Um, but I love it. I, I play it on the PlayStation that I have a lot. And, uh, and then I tell Lydia about it and she just laughs at me. She's like, cool i'm like ah, i beat that boss i've been working on and she's like nice happy for you um what is lydia what is lydia's thing if yours is gaming being in um let's see i would say hers is i mean she watches a lot of stuff you know a lot of shows Mm -hmm. a lot of movies um but she's an artist is what she does she is um she does drawings like fashion drawings is what they're called really yeah, yeah, she has, she has a business where she does fashion drawings and she does um, like portraits, family portraits for people in like a cartoony, cute kind of style. Um, yeah, it's really cool. She has a good page, Lydia Louise Illustrations on Instagram. Just check it out; it's good stuff. Um, she's done a bunch of drawings. She's done, you know, she's drawn us. I I think. Oh yeah, I'll go. I'm gonna go grab one because it's of yes. me and her. So one second. This oh, is this is gonna be great. And you you can still hear me, right? Yeah, I, can I hear have you. my microphone attached to my face. Oh my god! This I know, amazing. right? What a world! What a world we live in. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff she does. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so it's her and me. Um, this was a so she takes a reference of a picture, and this is we were standing on the field at in Pittsburgh after a fireworks night. Um, we took the picture, and then she takes like a, um, you know. A, a uh, picture of the Pittsburgh skyline and then traces that out and it does it like that. And it's really, really cool, but she I is might, very I good. might hire her. You should. She does full portrait. family portraits. She does, you know, add dogs and cats and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, she's been, she's been doing some awesome stuff. She loves it. And she like around Christmas time, she gets absolutely crushed, obviously. Oh yeah. Of course. Um, so like the, the three, the month leading up to Christmas is bananas for her it's constant she's just constantly drawing but it's really she loves it and she's really good at it um so yeah that's most of what she does she officially quit her job at the bar because she's coming out with me wherever we go this year 
Um, so she's just living the drawing life. She's just an art artiste. It's great. I love uh, it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you with um, wherever you land. Thank be you. It'll fun. be, uh, now, who knows? Well, here's something fun for you. Um, we're actually going out to Arizona, our whole crew for John Boy Media. Ooh. We are going to have a content house, and we fully expect uh, Mr. Brault and Miss Lydia to drop by. Oh, we will. hang out with us. We will. I'll dominate in Blitzball and uh, Wii Sports. Anything else, anybody, anybody wants to play. I've never thrown a blitz ball before, but they look like fun. They, so, you, it looks impossible to hit. Like, I don't even understand, like, what is the point of even having a hitter there? I don't, right. Like, how do you hit that ball? Well, have you been watching the blitz ball battle? Yeah. That we've had? It's yeah. crazy, right? And Jerry Blevins, I saw, I talked to Jerry. 13 years in the majors, he's like, not once have I ever been asked to throw slower in my career. Because, you know, there, we had the miles per hour rule, which we've now dialed yeah. back even more in the second round. And it's been a little bit, you know, controversial. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, he, he said it, it took me a while to kind of figure out with my consistent release how it would work. But right. He said it's, once you figure it out, he said it's pretty cool. The uh, Sorry, I saw Rob said that you guys play ping pong too. Um, yeah. I'm not a very good ping pong player, but Kevin Newman, who lives out here in Arizona as well, Maybe the best ping pong player I've ever seen. He ever? is amazing. Like, cause you know, in, in baseball, there's ping everybody pong plays all over the place. Um, and Newman has a ping pong table at his house and he's just, Oh my gosh. You know how, like he doesn't strike out very much in baseball. He's, you know, a contact guy in ping pong. He is the opposite. That dude crushes the ball. He is vile with a paddle in the sand. It's okay. really impressive. Bring him, bring anybody else that you want. That, that's in your Rolodex that wants to roll through. We'll be there. I'll, I'll let you know. What yeah. Time we're going I have, in, so. You know, we got like, you know, 300 baseball players out here at least. So probably find a few. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's give word of mouth. I think it'd be a, a blast. Um, baseball might not be going on. John boy media never stops around here. Never, never. stops. Um, before we get out of here, we're going to uh, roll through. Uh, Robbie was good enough to find an old, wheel of moderately interesting things that is available so let's see where this one lands i don't even know what else i've got on there. uh looks uh let's see tripping i don't know if i ever did that one with you sounds familiar. Uh, yeah where your next trip would where you'd like to go on your next big trip mm, we've actually been talking about this um we want to we have <laughs> complete opposite choices so this is going to be right at the end of next of this season like before we go home we're just going to sh sh pack a bag and go on a trip right so don't get settled at home just go and we either have italy or we have like the bahamas like we're gonna go either super tropical or go out to italy and, and visit a few places out there but not sure which one we got a few months to decide so It'll be fun. Have you been to Italy? I have not. I've been to Spain and Germany and Austria. That's it in Europe. You would be a great you and Glass now out of the, all the guys in the rotation would definitely be the best backpacking guys on a trip. I've, I'm sure. I don't know if Glass has told you this. He had a he had a season where after the season one year he just took a backpack by himself, flew to Europe. By himself with no real plans. Like he went to France first. Of course. Because that's that's what he does. I mean, I he know. just he's so interesting, isn't he? He's so interesting. I tell people that all the time. He's the most interesting man in the world. He sees it from a different perspective and not just because he's six foot eight. Right. Also because he's just a weirdo. He's I mean, he's his his <laughs> thought processes are different than the average human being. It's a good thing. Oh my God, he is one of a kind, isn't he? Are you but guys going great somewhere? To catch are Sorry. we? Yeah, we are. We are. Um, we have a 25th anniversary coming up this year. Ooh, young nice. Michelle Rose and I. Yeah. Which and which one is that? Silver, silver gold, wood, silver. Yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's not until September, but that runs into a lot of football duties for me. So it's uh -huh. not like I can get a lot. So we're gonna go away with some friends. Um, we had a friend who just turned 50 and we're going to go celebrate her birthday. We're going away relatively soon for a little, cool. just a couple of days just to get away and 
we'll, a little pricey, so we're going to probably dip into the uh, 25th anniversary and kind of enjoy ourselves there. Too. Just dip into the college fund. Kids don't. Yeah, even. yeah, yeah. You really can't do that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but, you know, no, I'm no accountant or financial analyst or anything, but I've been told pretty much to stay away from those. Just don't like touch this one. Yeah, yeah. We we still got to get one more through uh, through college anyway. So. Right. Um, but he started his uh, he started his baseball season. Got a little banged up. Hasn't been able to throw yet. Pitching, mm. little triceps issue. Fun stuff. Oh yeah, baseball's great. It's just so much fun. Ah, oh, it's the best. <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna get. Well, listen, I am uh, I'm thrilled that you guys are uh, are living together. That's very exciting. Hopefully, Thank we you. will see you in Arizona when we get uh, the whole John Boy Media band out there. It's gonna be great. I'd love to. to I'd our, rather our, be playing baseball, but you whatever go. works. And if there's anything I can do to make you sign with a particular team, you let me know because I have yeah, a, a totally. ton of pull in this sport. Yeah, I, I'm sure. If actually, I, I think I have a better chance of you getting me a contract uh, being like a battle bot referee than being a baseball player. So, maybe hey, if this thing goes that. long enough, I'll call you. I think we might be shooting in midsummer. So, you know, yeah. Ace. I'm I'm down. I'll call something that I have no idea what's going on. Perfect. That robot That's destroyed I do every that day. robot. Winner. That's it. Hey, listen, for my job, all you have to do is this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, it exploded! That's all you have to say. That's it. I mean, to be fair, though, that's awesome. You never get to say that it exploded in football or baseball. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's a very different tone. Yes. <laughs> all right, so uh, we are signing off yet again. Producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Scirocco and Stephen Brault. I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And today, presented to you by SeatGeek.